Even if most of the people a traveler comes into contact with are vision wielders, allogens are still very much a small subset of Teyvat's population. So the question is, what determines whether one gets a vision, how exactly does it work, and most importantly, why are they even given out in the first place? Like with everything else in this game, we have been given rather conflicting information about the visions. In the Travel trailer, Dane Sliff says they are rewards for the worthy, a doorway to divinity. The last part checks out with our current understanding of how some vision wielders ascend to Celestia and become gods. But what does he mean by worthy? What traits do the gods look for in those they bestow with their gifts? While Dane uses the word worthy in a derogatory way, claiming the gods are goading the people with power while rejecting mankind's search for it, it still implies a certain selectivity. In conclusion, being given a vision is not a matter of luck, or lack thereof, depending on your perspective. What could this trait be? Ambition. Not a surprise, right? This is what we've been told after all, but after all the lies and misinformation, I believe we can actually prove this to be the case with information we currently have available. First off, we need to define the meaning of ambition. In Inazuma Arkan Quest, Yaimiko said, and I quote, Your ambition should be something that transcends the world below and the starry sky above. Something that shines in unison with fate itself. Remember the line about fate, we will return to it shortly. But for now, Yai then went on to hypothesize that the Traveler might not have a vision not because they are incapable of having one, but because they do not possess such an ambition. The Traveler's whole journey has one goal, finding their twin. And that's the whole problem, because goals aren't ambitions. Goals are clear, precise objectives and have a conclusion, while ambition is a desire to achieve something far vaguer. It is not finite. Imagine that the Traveler is actually given a vision based off their desire to reunite with their twin. Once that desire was fulfilled, would their vision simply stop resonating with them? Which takes me to the way visions are activated. An allergen may receive a brand new vision by having it appear in front of them or somewhere that it can easily be found by them, or they may resonate with a masterless vision. Masterless visions are visions whose original wielder has passed away. They become inactive and unable to grant anyone elemental abilities. But in rare cases, they may be able to resonate with a new wielder. This was how Mona and Ingwang both got their visions. But why is it so rare? What determines whether a vision can be activated by a new wielder or not? Well, if visions are awarded to ambitious people, then it's possible that even after the allergen's death, they are still linked to that same ambition that created them in the first place. Meaning, maybe the one condition to activating a masterless vision is possessing the same ambition the original wielder had. We can't prove this with either Mona or Ningguang, but I believe we can do so with Kazuha. Kazuha is a very special case because he is the very first character we know of who has been able to use two visions at once. But he had carried his dead friend's vision with him for a long time and it never reacted. It only sparked to life for a brief moment when Kazuha protected the Traveler from Raiden's attack. I'd argue that blocking such an attack was the whole reason why that Electro vision appeared in the first place. We know Kazuha's friend dreamed of braving the lightning's glow. This unnamed friend wished to experience and block first-hand Raiden's Muso no Hitotachi, which kind of sounds like a goal rather than ambition, but his underlying motivation might have been to prove himself and humanity in the face of divinity. Be that as it may, his Electro Vision only activated when Kazuha found himself in alignment with that same ambition. And once the attack was over and the Traveler safe, said Vision deactivated once more. Okay, so it doesn't feel like a stretch to assume that visions are awarded based on ambition and that that same ambition remains linked to the vision even after the wielder dies. But it might do more than simply be linked to it. The visions may act as a vessel to contain said ambition. We saw firsthand what having their vision taken away could do to a person during the vision hunt degree. The degree of severity of the effects varies, because some of these unfortunate souls still had it in them to join the resistance, while others lost most of their memories and, along with them, their motivation to fight back. Yai said that to lose one's vision was to lose one's ambition. The Traveler's character page also holds a rather ominous message about visions. It states, is it wise to allow a moment's ambition to dominate one's entire life? The use of the word dominate here sounds very purposeful. I mean, sure, being given a vision will undoubtedly change your life. It gives you power beyond what most humans can ever hope to get. But it doesn't dominate your life. You still choose your path, right? Well, we know each person in Tevat, including the Daptai, Yokai, Gods, and even the Traveler have a constellation. And said constellation can be used to read one's future, one's fate. The question is, 
is the fate your constellation conceals unchangeable, or do you still have agency over your actions? If the gods of Celestia can dictate exactly what destiny each person is meant to have, then it seems really weird that there are still beings capable of opposing them. Why not just make your subjects love you? Remember what Yaimiko said? To be given a vision, your ambition needs to be something that shines in unison with fate itself. Think about this with me. If the gods intended you to live out your life a certain way, and you, at some point, hold an ambition capable of leading you down that path, and are given a vision that quote-unquote feeds on that ambition, then you wouldn't be able to turn back, right? Maybe Celestia can't decide your life path, but it can lock you onto one you put yourself on. If you want to look at this from a different perspective, ambitious people often achieve more than their peers. They don't simply give up when life throws setback after setback at them. So, from Celestia's point of view, this might be the most troublesome individuals. By giving them visions, they are making them more powerful, but also installing a power button of sorts. If they get too rowdy, you can always take their vision away and there will be a fair chance their will to fight will just evaporate. We know visions are meant to act as some form of control from Celestia. They are literally called God's Eye in the Chinese and Japanese dubs. They are watching. Who's to say they are doing nothing more? Anyway, this is not a full-fledged theory, but it's something that has been on my mind, so I wanted to share it with you guys. What do you think? Well, that's all from me for today. My name is Blue, and I'll see you again soon. Safe journey, travelers.